of spatial configurations into the design process, uh, theoretically. We wanted to equip the design process with the knowledge, uh, this kind of knowledge from its very beginning. And that's actually related to my teaching experience. I usually teach students that this architectural design is not just about forms, but it's mainly, it should be mainly about configuration. But they usually get frustrated because they don't have the right tools to, do, to practice design in this way. So I, I thought it's best to provide them with the right tools. And it was also a very old idea of ours to, to use bubble diagrams as a way of approaching architectural design. And I, I, think, I, I, I think there's nothing wrong with this dichotomy of interest in subject matters because science is mainly concerned with how things are and design is about making new things which have never existed before. So there's nothing wrong with that. But, but when we have some knowledge in, in a sort of objective form available, why not using it in a design process? So uh, the, the whole idea in a nutshell is using a bubble diagram uh, to, to approach a plan layout. So we're thinking that, okay, it's, it's rather straightforward to analyze a plan with a, uh, with a set of uh, connections between the uh, center, uh, center of each space to other spaces which are connected to it and, and do a sort of space index analysis. But we also think that we could actually start the design process by, by, um, by making a model diagram and, and that is very important because we think that a model diagram can contain a lot of uh, meaningful things uh, that the designer can think of as, as the, let's say, the likely social uh, implications of a certain configuration. We believe that an intellectual designer can think of the, the effects of a uh, spatial configuration in advance in terms of a bubble diagram and put it into this form. And then this is the most intellectual part of the design process that should be left to the designer. And then from there on, the designer can, um, can play with these things to, to reach a more concrete uh, plan layout. So we take it for granted that the particular way in which spaces are linked to each other or the configuration is, the, is an essential part of the design process and should be. So, uh, and there is a fine issue here. We, uh, we did some uh, survey on the existing plan layout algorithms and we found out that actually most of them are somehow related to optimizing something and reaching or finding a configuration for, for the plan. But we find it somehow in contradiction with the way uh, uh, designers work. The de designers don't look for finding something, they, they want to propose a configuration. So we think that a configuration should be something which is proposed by the designer in terms of the bubble layer of the or the connectivity pattern. And then well, uh, actually the evaluation of a, conf a certain configuration is something which is uh, highly contextual because, for instance, when, when you look at the integration uh, analysis of a map, you cannot say that low integration is good or bad or high integration is good or bad, it's just a contextual map. So low integration means more privacy and it could be better than high integration for certain functions. So it's, it's, uh, it's a contextual thing to uh, evaluate uh, spatial configuration. So we, leave the, we let the uh, evaluation to be done by the intellectual designers. And what we are trying to do is to help designers to reveal what is uh, what, uh, uh, some geometric uh, uh, patterns that could be uh, actually uh, manifestations of a, a, a configuration on bubble diagram, for instance. So we thought, okay, in, instead of dealing purely with abstract functional descriptions or uh, purely with dealing with concrete forms, we could do something in between. We deem cons configuration as something in between these two abstract and con concrete domains. And we think uh, the design process could be mainly about configuration and configuration analysis. And the reason we are showing this differently than the other lines is because this is not an automated process, configuration or evaluation, so to say. So, um, 
technically we we propose this process which starts with a with a graph which is a, a mathematical representation of the special uh, links that the designer proposes and then we find the planar topology of that graph which is one step closer to geometry because a graph itself is a is a very abstract thing it doesn't need to have any geometric representation at all but the planar topology is something which is one step closer to geometry and then we find multiple plan geometries each of which could contain that graph and actually um, these are uh, uh, I mean, we, we start with one single object and we end up with a catalog of possibilities. And at the same time, we provide the, the user with space syntax feedback and the input graph in real time. And of course, we leave the evaluation to the intellectual designer. As I said, because we think it's, a, it's an intellectual interpretation and evaluation which is contextual. So, uh, the measures we have uh, implemented in the two suite are uh, depth and visual depth in classified graphs, and we do uh, integration analysis in entropy, difference factor for and control and betweenness. I'm not going to explain this thing because this is facing my symposium, perhaps all of you are familiar already with these measures. But the, the main thing is that we, we have added, included some uh, help arguments to the components of our tool that give some sort of an intuitive description of these measures to, in order to introduce these measures to the general uh, public or the, or the uh, design practitioners. Um, so this is a, a, a set of tools that we have built so far and we have released so far. There are more tools that we have not yet released. And, um, so the, the, the graph, uh, the space syntax measures are, as I said, between integration, factor entropy and control, and justified graph and, and a couple of uh, graph drawing algorithms to to uh, basically free the designer from the task of graph drawing and, and just uh, let him or her purely think of configuration only. And of course the. Uh, Two graph representation models, one for nodes and links, and one for actual line graph representation. This is mainly for future functionalities, but, but so far it works fine, but we, we should add some various limitations to the calculations to in order to make a better sense of this. And the tool suite is already available for download and it's already in use. And I I should actually thank Richard, the next presenter, because of the Two suite published earlier than us, and we learned a lot from this two suite. This two suite is more for advanced users than this suite. In, in this two suite, we have uh, put a lot of effort to make things easy for, for the general users to, to, to easily uh, work with graphs and, and see things. I mean, the, we have done many editions of the tools just to make the, the interface simple. Okay, and this is an image of the tools in action. Uh, I, I, this is the node graph, com uh, node link graph uh, component. It basically just needs a set of points and, and links between them, and the rest are just optional inputs like names or area values and, and total area value. And, and this is a, a force directed graph drawing algorithm which uh, makes an integral diagram out of the graph. And a few utilities. So basically, the design starts with putting uh, a, a, set, a set of points of vertices and, on the, and the canvas and connects them to each other as he or she thinks they should be connected without paying attention to the geometry at all. And then, or you could also start with action lines, but in this case, this is mainly about this kind of graph. And then, uh, design gets a uh, impact on the connectivity and interpretable connectivity thing and, uh, and in real time uh, designer gets a, a view of the graph as a power diagram which can easily get updated by changing the area values and so on so we uh, free the designer from worrying about geometry of the thing and just show the designer what is uh, their idea in, in terms of the and at the same time, these two immediately, uh, these two immediately review the um, affordances of a certain plan and 
and we hope that the designers will read this help uh, documents embedded in the components and they understand that this is not just about good and bad, but this is about different affordances of spaces. And, um, and we just provide these measures and leave the, the creative users for, uh, to come up with some sort of contextual evaluations of these measures. And this is the uh, justified graph component. So I think that the, the problem is fast. Okay, so this is the fragmented bubble diagram in the in the geometry environment with the measures all that are also provided there. Justified graphs and okay, so and the generative process, the 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 actual the the phase in which we reveal the possibilities of, of a bubble diagram to be converted into a plan layout. In simple steps I can explain this as a as a process of reaching at a convex topology, which is uh, based on a two-step convex algorithm, sorry, and uh, then this triangulation means adding new adjacencies, which were not uh, uh, actually mentioned in the first connectivity graph. And the final issue here is that when you want two spaces to be connected to each other, it requires that they, they be adjacent also to each other. But but there are some adjacencies which are not necessarily mentioned by the designer, but they're not impossible. For instance, you could consider your kitchen to be adjacent to the bathroom, but they're not necessarily connected. But for because of mechanical uh, pipelines and these kind of things, it's perhaps good to put them adjacent to each other. But this is not something that you think of as a designer to put them next to each other. But this connectivity pattern is more. Important. So you start with this obviously, and then you get a complex topology, which is and embedding of the graph on a, on a plane surface by connecting these spaces to nominal geographical size north, east, west, south. And then the two finds uh, possibilities for triangulating this, meaning adding new adjacencies which uh, uh, convert this into something which could be seen as a, as a pilot for this kind of dual graph which actually corresponds to a plan which should uh, contain that graph in itself. Okay, so this is the sketch box that immediately pops up when the designer puts the, the, the notes in, in the middle. And we don't ask much about the information, we just ask for the points. And the two uh, put some colors, just uh, conventional colors to, to make the spaces more distinguishable. And then we ask the user to provide some links with the nominal geographical sites uh, of the plan. And this, of course, could be a rotated plan, but anyhow, this, this is just a notion of connecting to the sides of the plan. And then this is the result of the plan of drawing algorithm or complex drawing algorithm. And then the good point is that this is a unique representation. There is only one convex plan representation of that with that connectivity. But from this point on, actually the design space expands. And, and by the way, we also uh, provide a sub graph, which is only the connections between the individual spaces. And this is the, let's say, uh, complete graph with considering the connections to the sides. These are the tools in action. The, this is a different uh, component considering the north, east, west, south connections and, and the tutor drawing algorithm and this is triangulation algorithm and dual graph algorithm. Okay, so uh, it basically works like this. If after you get a triangulation, which there, there could be many triangulations, but not too many, that's an important one. Uh, in, in the center of each triangle, you have a node, and when you connect these uh, center nodes, you get into this dual graph. Uh, it's not that simple, but anyhow, that's the basic uh, algorithm behind it. And then this dual graph is is already representing a geometry that would contain that graph as a as a connectivity pattern. And of course, by adding each of those uh, extra lines, extra dash lines for triangulation, we are adding a new adjacency which is not considered in the, in the menu. But it is not impossible to add that. 
And there's this interesting question that we could ask how many triangulations are out there. And it is uh, kind of clear that the, the, the less we provide this algorithm with information, the more possibilities would be there. So for instance, if, if you have just a quadrangle, which is not triangular, uh, triangulated, we can triangulate it in only two ways. But if it's a pentagon, uh, it could be triangulated in five ways, but I mean, if it is a hexagon, it could be triangulated in 14 ways. And these numbers come from this Catalan number, which uh, actually describes the number of uh, possible combinations of these uh, edges that triangulate these uh, cells. And this actually gives an idea of how big the design space could be. So, for instance, when, when we look <coughs> at this one, there is a pentagon which is not triangulated and, and a couple of quadrangles here. So, in total, we have 2 to the power of 6 times 5 times 14. Actually, I think that I mistake that there was different image here. But okay, anyway, if, if you have a hexagon, we have 14 times 5. And, and so the order of design space is in uh, 4,400 something. And I said it's the order of design space because some of the triangulations correspond to triangular spaces which are not particularly interesting. So, and as I said, if, if the designer provides just a couple, uh, a few more links, just in this case two more links, the design space, uh, the, the number of possibilities goes down uh, drastically to like uh, 1,280 possibilities. And this is not um, many possibilities and if you think of computational possibilities. You could, for instance, do uh, an easy sorting, ranking uh, algorithm to find the ones which have the best affordances with the, within the possibilities. And of course, we could provide it with the catalog. And so, for instance, this is one case that shows um, 16 possibilities in one case, 18 admissible triangulations of possibilities. Uh, the dual graphs of a, of a bubble diagram, actually. And from this point on, actually, we have ranked them. This is still a question of thing for us, how to rank these things, but we are constantly thinking of this. For instance, here we are considering the, the match between the, the area values of these uh, dual graphs with the areas mentioned at the beginning by the designer. I know that this is not a, a very good okay, uh, choice, but we are still thinking of finding the best one within, within that thing. But optimization is not that important for us. The, the important thing for us is to reveal all the possibilities which are already uh, somehow implied by the initial graph. So, and this graph would later be um, transformed into a rectangular drawing, and that rectangular drawing in the middle is actually a dimensionless uh, diagram of connectivity, which could later be improved and dimensioned uh, according to these algorithms uh, uh, mentioned here. And then this could be like a template for a plan at this point. So we are not yet at this stage, we are uh, still finishing something with the triangulation here, but we hope we can finish this uh, soon. And this is a flowchart of the whole process. So the graph formation and in the middle and immediate uh, or real-time space syntax analysis and uh, basically and, and and there is a different course of action which starts with that uh, what we call a news graph considering north east west south which could result into uh, uh, to a set, set of uh, triangulations and then rectangular dual graphs and the, the interesting thing is that I already uh, mentioned that First, we start with one alternative, which is the, the configuration uh, put forward by the designer, and then 
we reveal a unique uh, topological embedding and then we try relations that are, uh, let's say, n possibilities and alternatives and then after this stage, uh, there is one stage to, to make it ready for, for converting it into a rectangular drawing. So here the, the design space expands, let's say, with the num number m. So we, in total we get for each of these possibilities we get m on our alternatives, let's say. And so the design space expands. But uh, in any case, this is a pretty much limited design space, so it's not even good to search within this design space. Thank you for your attention. I also want to uh, run this video while I'm um, answering the questions. I hope you are. This video shows the tools in action. For instance, I can think of 
one of the spaces as, as the space which I wanted to be the most prominent space, but when I do the integration analysis, I find that, that this is not perhaps the most integrated space, but there's another one which is the most integrated. And I want to have, for instance, absolute privacy in my bedroom, and, but I find out through the integration analysis that perhaps the bedroom is not located at the best uh, spatial uh, configurational situation because it has a high integration, so it's not fit to what I thought it's good. So, and this is the, the action line with the graphic presentation, which works the same way. So you, you could provide this, the same algorithms with these action lines and immediately get the results, and there's no major difference, but as I said, we, we're going to add that radius link to the analysis to make it more quickly uh, advanced at this point. I must say that these tools for the generative part are not released yet for the public, but the rest are, I mean, just these two parts are not released. The two parts with them. Because we're still working on the other things. Translation we have a dual geometry which can contain that graph as a connectivity path. 